Hi everybody. Um, I promise, since I'm going last, I won't like just re-say everything else that has already been said. Um, but I'm also a senior from UNH, and I'm studying Spanish, and I'm also a double major in economics. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, a little bit about me. Um, my concentration in economics is global trade and finance, and I have a minor in international affairs. And so I'm actually from Massachusetts. Um, I'm not from New Hampshire, but I fell in love and keep falling in love with New Hampshire and what it has to offer in terms of like getting outside. Um, some things I do on campus, I run the Spanish club with a couple other students. I lead trips in the outdoors for um, all kinds of UNH students. I'm a dancer, and I work for UNH Human Resources. I'll get into that later. And I'm also a Hamill Scholar. So I guess it's definitely possible to study what you want to study and also manage the co-curriculars that you want to do. Um, I find that UNH, you can really manage your time and learn how to do that um, really well. So this is what I'm going to be talking about throughout the whole presentation. Kind of like my timeline of learning Spanish and you know what sparked the passion in me for that um, and how I plan to use it in the future. So I'm from Massachusetts, Duxbury, Massachusetts. It's right on the South Shore. And when I was a sophomore in high school, my family hosted a girl from Spain, Maria, for two weeks in the fall. And then I visited her for two weeks in the spring and stayed with her family. Um, and that was amazing. Like I distinctly remember like making an apple pie with Maria in my house and then going to her um, family and like eating snails for the first time and messing up words and then, you know, saying, oh, you did not mean to say that. Um, but that was great. And when I was walking on the streets and hearing people like speak rapid Spanish into their phones, I kind of had this moment where I was like, I want to do this for the rest of my life. Like, this is what makes me happy, like being outside of my comfort zone and like just being totally lost, but then working your way through that um, was great. And so I kept taking Spanish classes in high school. I took AP Spanish. Um, I'm not sure if you guys have this here, but um, I was in the Spanish National Honor Society, so that was great. We got to do some like events for the community of my town um, to like spread the Spanish language, especially around like Dia de los Muertos uh, in the fall. So that was great. Uh, and then finally, UNH. Um, so these are the classes I've taken at UNH, UNH so far, besides my study abroad. Um, and I can't really say enough good things about what I've learned and what I've taken away. I've been able to read entire books in Spanish, watch movies. I took a linguistics course um, and translated from Latin to Spanish. And while that was really difficult, I took some things away um, and learned about how, you know, in different Spanish-speaking countries, there's different accents and pronunciations. Um, and something in particular was, I read this book called Agua como Chocolate, and anytime someone mentions that book, I like still think about it, um, and it's just a great talking point. I've made some friends with Spanish students, and there's a really great learn language learning community that um, I've helped build a be part of. Um, and then in my sophomore year at UNH, I took part as like a research assistant for a migration project that was taking place. Um, it was a collaborative research project between UNH and National Community College. And so there were student researchers from UNH interviewing English second language students from National Community College about language inclusivity levels on campus. Um, and these English second language students, most of them were native Spanish speakers. Um, so the interviews were conducted in both English and Spanish, and I got to like sit in and be a part of some of that. So speaking Spanish with those um, native speakers is just awesome. Some other people have talked about like that's the real way to learn the language. Um, and so I guess UNH really gave me this opportunity to do this, like uh, being a part of a research project at like such a young early start in my college career was really transformative. And I actually got to present my work as like an assistant at the undergraduate research conference. And our findings from this project led myself and a couple other students to start the Spanish club at UNH because we kept saying, why is there no Spanish club? 
you know, what better way to spread the joy of speaking Spanish on at UNH and throughout New Hampshire by starting a club to do that. Um, so that's been a really awesome part of my college career. And then in the spring of my junior year, I participated in the Granada program that we've talked about before. Um, and I think about that program every day, <laughs> today. Um, so I took five classes, all in Spanish, literature, art, Islamic culture, grammar, economics class. That was really awesome for me. Um, I stayed with a host family. There were a bunch of like language intercambios uh, throughout like the city that you could go to um, and not just native Spanish speakers would go but other people like the city of Granada is like known for being a college student city so it attracted a lot of different like people our age um, from a lot of different places around the world so you know I got to speak Spanish but with a native French speaker so hearing all these different perspectives and like hearing people's stories was awesome um, and so with this UNH managed program we also got to travel to other parts of Spain um, you can see all the cities right there and it was a really great deal <laughs> I would say with like what you pay for financially I was awarded a couple scholarships so they do look out for their students you know if you're not able to you know front all the costs um, and it's a really good package like what you're able to do and I paid less money than I would for an actual semester at UNH so that was awesome um, this was me uh, with my host family Juan and Maria um, we were celebrating Dia de la Cruz or Day of the Cross in May um, and I actually still talk to them today we like connected really well and they really looked out for me, gave me advice um, and I would recommend that host family experience to anybody studying abroad. Uh, this is the school where we studied, Centro de Lenguas Modernas or Center of Modern Languages um, and so there were actually a lot of other American students from different college campuses in our classes so not only were we connecting with like Spanish um, native people but other students studying abroad. So just meeting as many people as possible. Um, uh, that was in the top, your left photo was in Cordoba. So that was beautiful. Uh, this was my walk to school every day. So you can see there's a lot of green, a lot of beauty in the city of Granada. Um, that was the Sagrada Familia. And the sentence I kept saying to myself was, I've seen this in the textbooks, I've seen this in the textbooks, you know, it's like plastered on every Spanish textbook uh, in Barcelona, that was, so that was wonderful. Um, this is Dave the Cross again, um, my host family dressed me in the like traditional traje gitana, and I remember learning to dance like Las Sevillanas with my host mom, and they really just kind of welcomed me with open arms into celebrating that day and you know something I will also never forget um, a huge uh, pan of paella <laughs> delicious um, that was my host dad and I making roscos de semana santa they're basically like these donuts um, and semana santa is another huge holiday in Spain especially in the south of Spain where I was um, and that's another photo from Semana Santa. There's all these, it's basically the week leading up to Easter. There's all these processions at the streets. Um, and then this is from the Alhambra Palace, also in Granada. So definitely, you know, beautiful sights, be great, delicious food. But I will never forget, like, speaking in Spanish with my host family almost every day, you know, waking up in Spanish, going to bed in Spanish than dreaming in Spanish. Um, I think that's what's helped me get my skin, Spanish skills to where they are today. And this semester, I've actually started a job for UNH Human Resources as a Spanish translator. Um, so I go to meetings where, like for the hospitality services or any sort of meetings where there might be native Spanish speakers that work for UNH and help interpret for them. I translate documents um, and I'm learning so much about myself and my Spanish skills through this role, what I have to improve upon, um, what it's like to be put on the spot and not know a word, or 
you know, like problem solving, and there truly are some things that just don't translate, <laughs> some phrases, some words, so um, really building upon my skills, uh, and UNH has given me the tools to do that, so very thankful for that. Um, my future plans, as the other, my other fellow UNHers have said, there's a need for Spanish and all other language speakers. These are actual job, you know, like tidbits from Handshake, it's like this job recruiting app that explicitly say like we see that you're studying Spanish we see that you're studying Spanish like please work for us so if that's any motivation to keep going with the language or to start learning a language it's that it's real people really value um, your like someone's ability to connect with diverse groups of people um, especially in our increasing globalized world and a volunteer opportunity that I'm actually doing sorted through UNH is um, I'm a tutor for a woman from the Dominican Republic who's trying to learn English. Um, her name is Angelica, and it's through the Dover Adult Learning Center. And UNH kind of exposed me to that, so it's just, you know, UNH keeps giving me these opportunities to improve my skills, and I can't wait to see what I do next for the rest of my senior year. It leads me to my future plans. Um, using my majors, I want to work for the federal government in some capacity. Um, UNH has helped me to apply for an opportunity to teach English in Ecuador um, next year, so we'll see if that happens. Um, and so I have a little story, a little anecdote to sort of wrap things up, but this past summer my, I worked as an intern in the Manchester office via Senator Maggie Hassan, and part of my job was to answer like constituent phone calls when anyone calls the office, maybe you guys have called the office. Um, and seeking help from their U.S. Senator or they have a question um, or opinion. So one day this past summer, my, the staff assistant answered the phone and the person on the phone said, does anyone in the office speak English? Or I'm sorry, does anyone in the office speak Spanish? And she turned around knowing, because I just talk about my passion for Spanish every day, she turned around and said, it's you, like you speak Spanish, right? And so I took the phone call and I talked with the person in Spanish and they were actually at calling to see if we had any update on their green card status and like their immigration plan. And so while I wasn't personally able to help them, I passed their information along to the staff member who could. And when I finished the call, I turned around and to the rest of the office staff members just staring back at me and saying, what just happened? Um, that's never happened here in this office before. So it was just such a fulfilling moment and reaffirming of like what I want to do with my life. And my driving statement has always been that I can help double the amount of people with two languages rather than one. And that's what I want to do. And making those connections with diverse communities is just so powerful, as you know, you've heard from everyone here today. So yeah, if you have any questions, let me know. That's also my email. I can like for current high school students, I could like give you my maybe phone number or like personal email too um, if you like really want advice on what it's like being a language student at UNH specifically. And thank you for having me here today. Oh. I, um, I have a question. So you mentioned that uh, you worked, uh, you, uh, you were a research assistant for migration in New Hampshire, um, working with ESL groups. Um, so what? Like, what country was the most represented, or which countries were the most represented, just out of curiosity? Yeah, I would say probably the Dominican Republic, um, but they were from a wide variety yeah, of yeah. places in Central America, especially. Um, and the <coughs> students, like, still, some of them still keep in contact with, like, their interviewers, I think. Like, they truly made an impact, and, like, mm -hmm. we're like, oh, like, we can, you know, exchange languages right now. Let's just keep doing it. Um, so yeah, mostly the Dominican though. For Dominican the, yeah. mm -hmm. And you mentioned also at the very beginning the Hamill Scholars Program. Mm -hmm. What is that? I think. Yeah, so it's a scholarship program given to UNH, or I'm sorry, New Hampshire like residents. Mm -hmm. um, I, since I'm not from New Hampshire, I was awarded it my junior year, and <coughs> your junior year you technically like, don't need to be from New Hampshire to get it. But it's a great scholarship program that not only is it like funding towards your education, but it's like a leadership cohort. 
So there's a woman in the honors program who runs it and you're required to like volunteer at least once a semester, attend like a tea talk with like a powerful person in the community. Um, you know, I attended one last week with this woman named Sam Hasey. She's a lawyer um, and she was just kind of talking about her experience uh, and like the job career field. Um, it's just kind of like building your leadership skills and networking skills. Thank you. Cool program. You mentioned the undergraduate research conference. Could you say a little bit more about that and kind of what opportunity it gives to you and your students? Yeah. Um, so the undergraduate research conference is open to like any student. And you guys can correct me if I'm wrong. That like wants to showcase a project they worked on throughout the semester. Um, mostly, from what I've heard, it's been like senior thesis or capstones, um, something of that nature. But I presented as a sophomore, so you can do it really any year. Um, and it's like all separated by discipline, by college. So um, depends on what your project is, what the class was, um, and it's open to the public. So you can invite friends and family to see you present. Um, you know, your advisor. Or, professor that helps guide you on the project will probably be there um, and you know they do it in the mug or somewhere sorry somewhere, where, do, where do they hold it on well, campus just... where, where does it take place oh um, it depends on like the college that it's through mine was in the language um, learning building Merkland um, but it happens in like the student union like they set up like the big granite state room um, with all like people's posters and stuff like that. Um, so it's a great opportunity to work on your presentational skills, um, like how you interact with other people. Um, yeah. I had another question to miss the Spanish club that you're part of, uh, running open to just students in the department, or is it Spanish speakers all over campus? Yeah, it's open to anyone, you know? People, like, at, there's this event called University Day when all the clubs on campus, like, come out and, you know, advertise themselves. And people are always like, oh, I don't speak Spanish, like, I can't go. And I always say, that's okay. <laughs> like, any skill level is encouraged to attend. Um, we're a language club, but we also are, like, a cultural club. So we have, like, cultural cooking events, and we listen to music. Last week, um, our friend Sofia taught us, like, a salsa lesson from her Mexican heritage. So. Um, there is that language component, but it's Spanish majors, like native speakers, we get all kinds of 